cosmic beings of the spiritual worlds. When clairvoyant consciousness comes to life in the elemental world, it finds beings who can develop a life there that human beings can achieve only within the sensory world. But these beings do not sense their self, their I, in the way human beings do in the sensory world. Much more than we, they penetrate their I with their volition, that is, they will themselves into existence. They experience their existence as something that through their will they give themselves. These beings do not feel, as we humans do, that they bring forth their own thoughts. Rather, they feel that their thoughts are inspired, that they are things that exist not in them but in the cosmos. To such beings, thoughts seem to radiate into their being from the cosmos. These beings can never doubt that their thoughts reflect the pattern of thought that is poured out over the world. They do not think their own thoughts. They think the thoughts of the world. By means of their thoughts, such beings live in cosmic thought. But it must also be said they will themselves. The feeling life of such beings forms according to their willing and thinking. They feel themselves as members of the cosmic whole. At the same time, they feel the need to will themselves in a way that corresponds to this cosmic whole. As a soul, they can see spiritually. Excuse me, read that again. As a soul that can see spiritually grows accustomed to the world of these beings, it comes naturally to understand its own thinking, feeling, and willing. In the elemental world, the human soul could not develop in an etheric body its capacities of thinking, feeling, and willing. Willing would remain merely a weak, dreamy force, thinking a vague, fleeting reflection of the world. A sense of self would not even exist. For all these things a human being must be clothed in a physical body. When the human soul rises above the elemental world into the actual spiritual world, it experiences clairvoyantly conditions that are even more different from the sensory world than are those of the elemental world. In the elemental world many things still remind us of the sensory world, but in the spiritual world we are faced with completely different relationships. We can accomplish nothing there with only the concepts we can acquire in the sensory world. Nevertheless, it is in the sensory world that we must strengthen our inner soul life so that from it we can bring into the spiritual world that which makes our stay there possible. If you do not bring a strengthened soul life into the spiritual world, you will simply become unconscious. Your presence of mind there would be something like that of a plant in the sensory world. As a human soul, you must bring into the spiritual world that which, though not existing in the sensory world, still gives evidence there to its existence. You need to be able to form concepts in the sensory world that, though suggested by that world, have no direct correspondence with things or processes in that world. In the spiritual world, anything that is a reflection of something in the sensory world or that describes some sensory process is meaningless. Whatever you perceive with your senses or substantiate with concepts applicable to the sensory world does not exist in the spiritual world. In a certain sense, when you enter the spiritual world, you have to leave behind everything that applies to ideas based on the senses. What does remain in the soul when it enters the spiritual world are those, form, are those thoughts formed in the sensory world that do not correspond to things or processes in it. <clears throat> Among these thoughts, of course, can be those that are mistakenly formed, if such mistakes are present in your consciousness when you enter the spiritual world, their very existence will demonstrate that they do not belong there. They will act so as to impress upon the soul the urge to return to the sensory or the elemental world in order to substitute the right idea for the false one. When, on the other hand, the soul brings correct thoughts into the spiritual world, Something in that world that is related to them strives to meet them. 
The soul feels that beings exist in the spiritual world, the whole of whose inner existence is the same as that of the thoughts in the soul. We might call the body of such beings a thought body. In their thought body, these beings experience themselves as independent, just as human beings in the sensory world experience themselves as independent in the physical body. Some thoughts a human being acquires are permeated with feeling. Thoughts of this kind are appropriate to strengthen the life of the soul so that it can receive an impression of the beings of the spiritual world. First you must intensify the feeling of devotion that you developed for the sake of the capacity of self-transformation in the elemental world, that is, in your devotion to the being into whom you will transform yourself. You do not experience sympathy or antipathy. Rather, you surrender to that being in such a way that it can live in your soul in its own way. If you strengthen this capacity, the capacity for perception in the spiritual world will arise. In a certain sense, each spiritual being speaks to the soul in its own way. A spiritual interchange thereby arises that consists of a language of thoughts. You experience thoughts, but you know that you experience beings in those thoughts. To live in beings that do not merely express themselves in thoughts, but are present in them with their own being, that is what it means for your soul to live in the spiritual world. Let me read that sentence again. To live in beings that do not merely express themselves in thoughts, but are present in them with their own being, that is what it means for your soul to live in the spiritual world. With regard to beings of the elemental world, the soul feels that cosmic thought is streaming into them and that they will themselves in accordance with its in-streaming. Beings who do not need to step down into the elemental world to develop what human beings develop in the sensory world, but achieve that stage of existence while in the spiritual world, these the soul feels consist entirely of thought substance. The soul has the feeling that cosmic thought does not simply radiate into these beings, but that their being lives in that interweaving of thoughts. They allow cosmic thought to think and live in them completely. Their life unfolds in the perception of the language of cosmic thought. Their will consists of their making themselves manifest in the form of thoughts. Their existence in thought in turn has a significant effect upon the universe. Thoughts that are beings speak with other thoughts that are also beings. Human thought life is the reflection of the life of these spiritual thought beings. During the time between death and a new birth, the human soul is as interwoven with the life of those thought beings as it is with the sensory world during physical existence. At birth, or more accurately at conception, when the soul enters sensory existence, its permanent thought nature acts upon it to form or inspire its destiny. What remains of the soul from previous earthly lives works in human destiny, just as the pure living thought beings work in creation. When suprasensory consciousness enters this spiritual world of living thoughts, it feels itself to be in surroundings that are completely different from the sensory world. In the spiritual world, the sensory world is seen as another world, just as, in the sensory world, the spiritual world is another world. For spiritual perception, the sensory world loses everything we perceive of it in sensory existence. All the characteristics and qualities we can comprehend through the senses or through sense-related reasoning disappear. On the other hand, from the perspective of the spiritual world, we see that the true primordial nature of the sensory world is itself spiritual. It is from the spiritual rather than from the sensory world that the soul's gaze discovers spiritual beings who unfold their activities so that the universe, which when looked at through the senses is the sensory world, arises out of the confluence of their deeds. 
seen from the spiritual world, all the characteristics, forces, matter, and so forth of the sensory world disappear. They reveal themselves as mere semblance. From the point of view of the spiritual world we face only beings. These beings are the true reality. It is the same with the elemental world. When seen from the perspective of the spiritual world, everything there that is not a being disappears. A soul feels that in the elemental world, too, its concern is with beings who, by letting their activities converge, allow an existence to appear, which, when perceived by the organs of sympathy and antipathy, is the elemental world. An essential aspect of becoming accustomed to the supersensory worlds is the realization that in place of the states and characteristics that surround our consciousness in the, in the sensory world, there are beings. The supersensory world is revealed, finally, as a world of beings. Aside from those beings, everything else that exists there is the expression of their deeds. Furthermore, the sensory and elemental worlds also appear as the deeds of those beings. <laughs>